When the Apollo program took us to the moon, it changed our perspective forever. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. For the first time, we were able to admire Mother Earth from a distance. This image made us realize that our blue and white planet is a unique part of cosmic space. As telescopes extend our outlook far beyond the solar system, we begin to realize that our world is unavoidably part of a stormy and creative galaxy. A new perspective is emerging. The galaxy drives our climate system in ways that we are only beginning to fully understand. For more than a decade, the Danish physicist Henrik Svensmark has worked on a new theory about the climate. This will alter our understanding of climate change. The processes that takes place in our universe from exploding stars and also dramatic changes in solar activity are affecting us much more directly than we ever dreamed of. Over the years, we have followed Svensmark in his struggle to be heard in a climate community resistant to the idea that present-day climate change might have natural causes. The fact is that clouds and water vapor have the biggest greenhouse effect on the Earth's climate. The secrets are to be found in the everyday clouds in our sky. In times when everybody is talking about CO2, clouds are a really important factor of climate change. Without clouds, the uh, climate on Earth will be completely uh, different and just small changes in the Earth's cloud cover will change the Earth's climate. So understanding clouds is a very, very crucial point. The mere idea that processes in space and not just processes on Earth is important for climate, I think is, is deeply fascinating. In 2005, we actually found experimental evidence that the Sun and the galaxy is determining climate here on Earth. But for some reason, no scientific journal wanted to publish this. It was a big disappointment for me and my team. There is a problem that has always been with us. New ideas are rarely welcome. In science, where particularly some young person not known in the field proposes some radical new idea, he may experience great difficulty in getting it published. The bottom line seems to be that instead of thinking of clouds as something being um, a result of the climate, it actually sort of upside down. It is that the climate is a result of changes in the clouds. The first time I got an idea of how important clouds could be on the Earth's climate was when my boss Eichel Fritz Christensen made a discovery where they found a beautiful correlation or agreement between solar activity and the Earth's temperatures. The agreement was so good that it could not be accidental. And this was really a big inspiration for trying to understand and trying to 
Use clouds as part of that explanation. When we published this in 1991, it was at a time where everybody believed that the warming that had taken place during the century was mainly due to carbon dioxide increase, man-made greenhouse gases. Uh, so uh, when this community saw this perfect, nearly perfect correlation between solar magnetic, now magnetic activity changes and temperature, they were very surprised. What we could see was that when the magnetic activity of the sun was larger, then the temperature on the Earth was higher. Nobody had an answer to what kind of mechanism could be the cause of that. We knew that somehow the magnetic activity on the sun had to have an influence on the Earth's climate, direct or indirect. But how this would come about was a real scientific mystery. But one day, someone stepped into my office and mentioned cosmic rays. When I heard this word, cosmic rays, it made me immediately think of an experiment I did in high school where we had what is called a cloud chamber. Inside the cloud chamber you have supersaturated air and when a particle, for instance a cosmic rays go through, it makes a string of small droplets like a small cloud. With this image in my head I thought, what if cosmic rays are responsible for forming clouds? And what if the Sun with its magnetic field is capable of changing the clouds on Earth? Then we would have a perfect explanation on how the sun would be responsible for climate through our everyday clouds that we see on the sky. You cannot see or feel the cosmic rays, but they are let loose whenever stars die in supernova explosions. As atomic particles with enormous energy, they rush through the galaxy at almost the speed of light. And some of them bombard the Earth. But the Sun fights the cosmic rays and controls just how many hits the air. In order to find out if cosmic rays affect the clouds, I began to look for data. I collected satellite data of the variation of clouds in the atmosphere and compared them with variations in the cosmic ray intensity. There was a beautiful, clear-cut correlation that surprised me more than I ever dreamed of. Uh, the red curve is for the cosmic rays, you see the variation, and the blue curve, that's for uh, the uh, cloud cover. It means that cosmic rays are affecting the Earth's climate, and that's a fascinating thought, since it means that space is very and directly relevant for us. The magnetic field that comes out of the sun has more than doubled over the last hundred years. As a result, fewer cosmic rays have sprayed the atmosphere and fewer clouds has formed. The consequence has been a warmer Earth. When a strong magnetic field comes out of the sun, fewer cosmic rays spray the Earth. That means fewer clouds to keep us cool. But a lazy sun with a weak magnetic field lets in more cosmic rays from the stars. 
and in the air, they make more clouds. That's how the stars and the sun controls the Earth's cloudiness. The uh, suggestion was made by Svensmark in Denmark that this effect of cosmic rays is really important. And he based that on the remarkable correlation between worldwide cloud cover and the cosmic ray intensity.